So if I could, if I were to describe Don in one word, I think it would be dedicated because um, one of the things that always stood out, you know, throughout my high school years, is that he took the job very seriously. He went above and beyond, you know, what's written in the job description, and um, that really reflected in terms of what you learned from him and what type of things he was doing and what type of things you got to do in his classes or in band or whatever it might be. Um, you know, for example, we got to go on band exchanges every other year. There were, uh, in my grade 12 year, we were setting up a recording studio. So, you know, we're taking, you're taking something beyond just the, the job description and doing something very innovative with it. And so like, yeah, I think dedicated would be the one word. If I could describe Mr. Bosse in one word, like I was thinking about this earlier, I don't think there's a word to describe him. Like he's just such a grand and great person that I don't think one word just sums up who he is and like all he's done for so many people. So I don't have a word for him. <laughs> I think I would say steadfast. Mm. You know, you don't see Don ruffled um, and mm -hmm. you don't see Don give up. You don't see him get tired. Mm -hmm. He just, he does what he does and he does it really well. And it's like Don has access to like the knowledge that whatever he's doing is gonna work out the way he wants it to work out, which is always well. I, I actually did think of one word when I was driving down here and I, I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't know if I should, but well, let's hear it. enrichmentageous. I kind of made up the word. Did you make that up? I did make it up. I started to believe, <laughs> but enrichmentageous because uh, Every, every activity that I've been involved with with Don, uh, and I've known him for quite a number of years, um, he, he's always about enriching students, obviously, and so on, but also the people that he works with. And when you see him do what he does, it's contagious. Patient. I would say patient. I think of patience first, because I often think about the first days in band. At 11 years old, like 30 kids, 40 kids in a mobile, like in one of those mobile school units that we had attached to Connaught Street. All of us never having played an instrument before. I have my trumpet for the first time. My friends have got clarinets, tubas. It's the cool thing to do. This is the other thing. It's the cool thing to do. Everybody wanted to be in the band. So their band is huge. We're all packed into this room and he has to teach us hot cross buns. I, I, and I think about that now as a musician and I think back at how much patience that would take because it would sound horrible. It would sound chaotic for so long, for months and months and months as people figure out how to play the instrument, how to listen to each other, how to play in tune, all of these things that it, it's a learning curve and you're doing it with sometimes 30, 40 people at the same time. It requires an insane amount of patience, passion, but patience, because most people would just give up, give up, and he never gave up. For me personally, uh, he created such a nice environment at FHS, a nice uh, community for all the music students and art students, theater, any performer, really. Um, just a place where we all belonged, and, and I, some of my greatest friends I met through band and mm -hmm. through the music department. Um, and then, of course, the community, he's done so much. He stood up for arts for the schools uh, all across the province. Um, He's like grown students up to be professional artists, musicians, um, theater technicians, and anything else that they wanted to be. It didn't have to be in the arts. He just, he always knew that we could do it and he helped us get to where we wanted to be. Uh, Don uh, models a certain kind of leadership, I would say. And uh, he does, as Rachel said earlier, um, uh, demand a pretty high standard of performance among people he teaches and leads. Um, but he does it with a, a very light touch. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people in his position would uh, not stop short of belittling, belittling or berating uh, or um, intimidating um, others. Uh, but that has never been his, uh, his approach. Uh, he's, he's always been pretty encouraging and uh, uh, and, and he'll sort of see weak spots in someone's uh, playing and so forth and would sort of isolate that, get the person to work on that and, and so on and so forth and kind of hold that person to account uh, in subsequent practices. Uh, but, it, but, I, but I was always impressed with how he could get a lot of other people um, without, without um, uh, uh, making them feel humiliated.
<laughs> and, and so forth. And that's, uh, that's pretty deft, I would say. Yeah, great teacher, amazing yeah. teacher. That's true, yeah. yeah. I remember him on that same point, kind of always thinking, yeah, but we tried this, but the kids didn't have a good time but the kids didn't like it, or the kids yeah. really appreciate that. Everything was seen through the eyes of the, of the kids doing it, I think. And I know that's how it felt when I was, you know, his student. And he would try things, and, uh, and if it didn't work, that was the last time you were gonna try it. <laughs> and uh, it's like, okay, and then he'd move on to the next thing and try another thing, and if it, and if it worked for the kids, then it didn't matter if it worked for him necessarily, but if it worked for the kids, then I think it would go through. Yeah, he'd put the students first. Yeah. I know he always, one of the first things he said is, when you make decisions about your band and you're talking about it in public, he said, never say, I decided. He just said, Treat, you're one of the group, say, we did, we did this. It was one of his pet peeves when a, a director of a band or a director of a group would say, I thought we should, and it was like, He's like, no, that's, that's not how it works. So he was always about that, that connection of what the, what the people in the group wanted to do. Kids or adults, I work with them in an adult group and it's the same idea. It's like, um, I think that Don has a really intuitive sense of where people's strengths and where people's vulnerabilities are. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my sense is in having dealt with him performing, like playing gigs or, you know, like I, I had the opportunity to work in a couple of musicals. Like I, I, he did a musical at Stu called Working a few years ago and I was in the pit band for that. And, and whatnot, and just um, watching him with with a lot of different people and a lot of different age people, um, you can tell that he kind of had a, a quiet, relaxed sense of knowing how to read people. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you'd agree with that or not. He's but, he's know. very good at um, he has very good intuition when it comes to what people need from him, and he's yeah. able to kind of shape shift into yes. whoever an individual person needs him to be in that moment. And yes. if what they need is independence and trying their wings out on their own, even if they don't realize that that's what they need, like he'll give it to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. So I still call him Mr. Boss. I'll call him Don. But I met Don when I was, I think, probably when I was six years old, when I went to grade one at Connaught. I seem to distinctly remember when he shaved his mustache. I don't know why, he just was always a guy with a mustache and then there was one day when he just didn't have a mustache. I think it corresponded when my dad shaved his mustache. It's one of those things when you're so used to seeing it. It was like a, a new man had now come into the class and was now teaching us. It was, it was the beginning of a new era for Don Bosse was the post mustache, there's a pre mustache period and there's a post mustache period. And I was lucky enough to be a student in both eras. <laughs> we were in the middle of jazz band rehearsal and my guitar amp stopped working. We still had that guitar amp, it's the one that Gary Hansen just fixed. And it wasn't working so I didn't really understand electronics that well and I went in the back with a screwdriver and I just started poking around and I, Zap that. I crossed the transformer with the screwdriver and I was holding it and I didn't turn the amp off because I was an idiot. And, uh, I got a massive electrical shock and I fell down two f of the risers, like kind of rolled down <laughs> and was just like, yeah, yeah. like this. Don did not stop the band for a second. He just kept conducting. He just kind of looks over at me and I'm on the ground and he's just like, points at the trumpets <laughs> and gets them to be in tune. <laughs> and I just kind of dusted myself off and I got back up in my seat. The amp started working. And I just came back in, chunking my cords and, and playing it. The screwdriver's probably still in the toolbox <laughs> now. And, but I just thought it was amazing. And I was like, that's how little Don cares about guitar players. That like I literally was <laughs> <laughs> lying on the ground and he's just like, figure it out, Weber. Just yeah. still conducting, <laughs> right to business. And, and that was that. So I had really bad anxiety with band, but also in my grade 12 year, um, it was probably the worst like mental state I've been in in my life. And I was going through some like really personal issues at home and my parents separated that summer. So I was dealing with um, like a new house and going back and forth and that new adjustment. And then I started my grade 12 year and it was just, it was just a big course load and it was just overwhelming and some of the courses I were in were so unnecessarily hard and I remember I just went to see him and I just ended up crying because he's just such a, a person that you can talk to and he's just always there and he was just there crying with me <laughs> 
And it was it was just like another big turning point because he was he was there for me and then he he got me counseling and he went to the counseling with me and he was like he made sure that they like took care of me and he made sure that they like because I needed to drop some classes but they were like oh this will affect your university career and he was just like no like she needs to do this like she's smart she can do it um, and he actually got me into an online course so I could graduate um, and he just it w it was just really great like I wouldn't have I don't know I don't even know if I would have survived grade 12 without his um, just guidance and him always being there for me so yeah he's, he's really important to me. <laughs> I remember too like when I was starting to become interested in jazz he uh, he even supported some of uh, us keen students and helped us kind of form a combo and uh, back then we were called the Northumberland Jazz Quartet because one of the, I think the saxophone player lived on Northumberland Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he, he even sort of reached out in the community with his contacts, got us the odd gig, mm -hmm. you know. We played a few, uh, uh, you know, New Year's levies for the, mm -hmm. the Lieutenant Governor and stuff like that. He, he set up those opportunities and kind of helped us get a little, you know, business pamphlet and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that's why I, my word was supportive, just because he, you know, and not only when I was young, but you know, my adulthood as well, he's, he's helped connect some dots, whether, whether it's a, a reference letter for this, a reference letter for that, or you know, it's uh, you know, helping me become a teacher, providing some opportunities to substitute. Mm -hmm. So he's just kind of been there. He's also you know, given me some things and some sage advice uh, that I can use with my students, so. The impact on my life is enormous. You know, often when I think about Don, I get emotional because it was, I played piano. I took piano lessons. It was, I like piano. My kids are on piano. I think it's really, really important. But I never really got into it. I got into music by way of band. Band is what got me into music. I liked listening to music, but band is where I went, this is what I want to do. And that was, that was Don. That was Mr. Bosse from grade five. I was 11 years old, I picked up that trumpet, and I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to learn, I wanted to listen. And then he moved to FHS before I went to FHS, before I went to high school, so he was my band director again with Mr. Kennedy. So I had two amazing band directors in high school, but I remember experiences in grade nine when I was starting to learn how to improvise, where I, was, I, I got a chance to go up to the high school, Don invited me up and I got to play with better players and listen and learn and I was always given those opportunities. My first time on this stage, my first time ever on this stage was with Don Bosse when I was in grade five. Um, you know, these are huge, huge moments. Like I can't underestimate the influence he's had on my life because he showed me how fun band could be. He made the bands great, but he also never let go of the fact that playing music with people is fun and it's a joy and it's magical. And when you listen and you can do stuff in the same direction, you can do really cool things and it's really special and it's a great feeling. It's never left me. It started in grade five and then it, I went right through junior high school and school band, right through high school. And in that spirit, he always brought that. Whenever he conducted, he always brought that. He does it all the time. I, uh, he's continued it since I left high school. He's been directing tons of other bands. But that's what he brings is passion for the music and passion for band, what it means to be in a band. And it's different. It's different than just sitting by yourself and playing guitar, or sitting by yourself and playing piano. It's a different activity. And it's one that is probably at the core of why I love playing music, is, is the idea of playing music with other people. And that was, that was really because of, of, of that school band experience at a young age that was just so, so fun. By winning the, the, the Music Counts Teacher of the Year Award, I think you put instantly put New Brunswick music programs on the map, you know, where we had probably no representation in that field at all up to then. Um, you know, I think uh, all of the cultural exchanges, the uh, Canada exchange programs he did, where he would go across the country, Newfoundland, uh, Alberta, BC, that was just in the time that I was here. Um, so tons of trips, right? I mean, I think uh, yeah. dozens, I'm sure, or For a sure. dozen anyway, yeah. over the years. And, uh, you know, his connection with, it seems like he knew someone at every university. I mean, it's just the national profile that our school has taken on. And I think, I th I'd like to hope we're, we're managing to keep up um, because of Don's sort of expertise and uh, track record. I, I think 
while professionally music is not a part of my life, a lot of the things that I learned through his classes, through being in band, through participating in exchanges, and through building that recording studio have directly translated to different elements of my life. Um, one of the things that in his music classes you had to write essays, and he took it upon himself that uh, you needed to know how to write. And that's very important. That, that has served me very well throughout my career so far. And one of the things that he did was emphasize how multidisciplinary music is. Um, for those who wanted to go to medical school, he emphasized that the admission rates for um, uh, music undergrads are very high. He uh, talked about the benefits, in, in no matter what discipline you end up in or what vocation you end up following, the benefits that music had. So it let you kind of appreciate music and not be stressed that you should be doing something else and you got to enjoy the music. It's not lost on me that when you add up those years and the amount of responsibility and the amount of time, I think you really, I mean, one, uh, and I know that Don feels this way, but like with, you know, Heather, you know, being someone that allowed with, with her, like, efficiency as a parent I just I don't like the amount of hours that he spent at that school doing stuff it's um sometimes it's literally just you just closing up doors and putting stuff away and you know if you're lucky you work on a team that helps each other out but a lot of times as a music teacher you're by yourself and you're the last you're you're fixing instruments you're ordering like the amount of things and the amount of hours uh it just can't be minimized I don't think that there's a person out there that's more deserving um, of the Playhouse Honors Award. I think that, you know, when you ask yourself who in this community has changed the artistic landscape of Fredericton, who in this community has, has cultivated and encouraged and brought out artists of all ages and, and backgrounds and given them a safe space to learn and develop and try something new and when you ask yourself who in this community embodies um, professionalism and musicality and skill those are all beautiful descriptions of Don Posse. Hi Don, as my elementary band director when I was first choosing the saxophone in grade four to my high school jazz and concert band director to Stu Jazz and finally as my practicum teacher, mentor and friend. You've definitely impacted me and my life's choices, helping to shape me into the musician and teacher I am today. You are so deserving of this honor. Congratulations from Vancouver Technicals After Dark Jazz Band. We hope that you are feeling good. I can't imagine anyone more deserving of the Playhouse honors than Mr. Don Bosse. I met Don in 1989 at Connaught Street Elementary School. I was about, I think, 10 years old at the time. And uh, I got involved in several bands under um, Don's leadership. And um, my experience of being um, a trumpet player under Don's direction was extremely positive for my life. Um, I learned a skill, I felt confident in myself. Um, Don was an incredibly supportive teacher who 
um, did not discriminate um, towards kids from different backgrounds. I came from a, a household of poverty and I never actually knew I was poor around Don. <laughs> he treated me like everybody else and I really um, attribute um, a lot of my self-confidence as an adult and my ability to move through higher education, um, obtaining two PhDs. I, I really attribute this to um, some of those early years of my life in, in band. And I, I can't imagine that I'm the only person that Don has had such a significant impact on. And so Don, like you, you have helped um, put my life on a trajectory of such awesomeness. I have a beautiful life out here in uh, British Columbia. And I thank you for your contribution to that. And I just hope that you have a wonderful evening enjoying and celebrating the awesomeness that is you. And uh, congratulations, this is an award extremely well deserved. Lots of love. Hi, my name is Emily Levitt, and I would like to extend my congratulations to Don Bosse all the way from Montreal. As an educator, advocate, and performer, Mr. Bosse is totally deserving of the Playhouse honors. I cannot think of another person who is more involved, engaged, or invested in the music community in Fairyton or New Brunswick at large. I graduated from Fairyton High School in 2016 and was at my happiest and most comfortable in the music hallway. The passion with which Mr. Bosse taught and the knowledge he imparted upon us as students has continued to affect my musical and academic career. It is my hope to be half the educator and mentor he was to us all. My musical career was truly ignited by Mr. Bosse and his encouragement. High school is a time in one's life filled with uncertainty, and Mr. Bosse's insight and continual support pushed me to realize my goals of becoming a musician and academic. Hearing him say, that's music, in reference to my playing, or calling my work creative, imaginative, or innovative, boosted my confidence and allowed me to become the musician, and more broadly, the person I am today. I credit much of my success to these formative years with Mr. Bosse. He is my inspiration, my former band teacher, and my friend. Congratulations, Mr. Bosse. Congratulations, Don. Uh, thank you for making my high school experience so much more musical than it would have been otherwise. Uh, really hard to put into words everything you've done for music in Fredericton and, and everything you've done in my life, so thank you so much. My name is Olivia Lapointe, and Don, it's taken me a while to stop calling him Mr. Basse, was my music teacher in high school. I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to be one of his students. Don is definitely a one-of-a-kind teacher. I was intimidated by those eyebrows at first, but his classroom was a really special place where creativity was encouraged. He challenged us to work hard, but he always made it fun and very interesting. I think one of his greatest gifts is his ability to make every student feel special. I was in grade 12 the year Don received the Music Counts Teacher of the Year Award at the Junos. It was very exciting and we were all so proud. After high school, I pursued a music degree in voice performance and I'm now doing my master's in opera and voice. Don's encouragement and mentorship has meant the world to me and I know there are countless other students who have benefited from his kindness and his wisdom. When you're a music student, there are usually people who will say things like, what are you actually going to do when you graduate? Don is someone who always makes you feel like what you're pursuing and what you're studying is important. He is truly a champion of music education. Don, I can never thank you enough for all that you've done for me. I am so, so thrilled that you are being honored today, and I wish I could be there in person to celebrate with you. Congratulations! Congratulations, Don. I can't think of anybody else more deserving for this award. Um, you're truly inspirational, very passionate for the arts, and I'm so thankful that I got to be your student at FHS Music Department, but also in Stu Jazz and still playing with you today. Thanks, Don, and congratulations. Richly deserved. Uh, congratulations, Don. You very much deserve this award, and I'm very happy to see that you're getting this recognition. Congratulations, Don. This is a truly an honor that you deserve more than anyone I can think of. You're such a, you were such a huge influence on my life, continue to be. So many other musicians, so many artists in this town have been inspired by your passion, by your dedication to music and art. 
And uh, I, I just, I'm so happy to be part of this, but to be able to be here to talk about how much you've influenced my life and, and thank you personally for everything you've done for me and for so many of my friends and my brothers, my family, and teaching us how important music is in our lives and something, whether we do it professionally or not, we carry it with us for the rest of our life. And that, that is something that you instilled in so many of us. So thank you so much, Don, and congratulations. Just want to congratulate you, Don. Um, you definitely deserve it uh, more than anyone I can think of in the Fredericton community. So uh, thank you for everything that you've done for me personally and the opportunities you've created for uh, this community at large. Keep it up. Don, congratulations. Uh, you know, there's nobody more deserving in my opinion. Uh, you've had a huge impact on me, on my family, uh, my whole life. You know, really, post, post uh, my moving here to Fredericton. And, um, you know, I can't imagine what my life would have become without, without meeting you. So, also, of course, what you've done for the community and all the students at FHS and, uh, and the other schools that you're taught at. So, uh, no one more deserving. Live it up, buddy. Congratulations, Don. Um, the work that you've done has made it so that I have a life that I feel is very fulfilling and very rewarding and that started and was encouraged by you as you've done with thousands of other people. I've always been a firm believer that if you have knowledge, skill, expertise and a passion that it, it's, it's one thing to have the ability to share it, it's another thing to have the willingness to share it. and. Don, you have done that. Um, you've done it to the nth degree. Um, you are the epitome of what this award is all about. And I wish you all the best and congratulations on this fine honor. We wouldn't be who we are as musicians or as educators or as a musical community in Fredericton without Don. Um, and I hope that he feels immense pride um, in all that he's achieved during his career here in the city and I hope that he knows how grateful we all are to know him. Don, congratulations. No one could deserve this more than you um, and we're just, we're so lucky to have you. Congratulations, you definitely deserve this award. I'm very happy for you and just we really appreciate you, everyone appreciates you.